Writing presents Let's Get Reading. <laughs> and here on the screen with me is Sarah Thompson. And Sarah is an author and, and of two books now and based here in Newfoundland, Canada. And her first book, The Love of Summer. Um, and uh, she's going to read from that book. I thought, you know, we're talking about writing and the whole process on these shows. Well, let's let's hear from some of these authors. What are they writing? And give you a chance to hear their work. So, hi, Sarah. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> Not too bad. So, we're going to hear from you. I'm going to actually shut up. <laughs> a novel thing. Um, and I'm going to be uh, down in the corner, and I'm going to enjoy your reading right now. And you can fill folks in on uh, what it is you're doing. So I'll say goodbye for now. Sure. So this is a reading from my first novel, uh, The Love of Summer. It's partway through the first section of the book, um, where we our characters uh, have finally started to realize that they might be more than friends. Exam week kept them both busy, and it was the Friday of Carrie's final exam of the semester before they were even able to make the walk home together. They exchanged knowing smiles as they walked, but neither bothered to even try to make small talk. Carrie still had a slight limp from the knee injury. The doctors told her with time it would get better, and she would hardly notice that anything had been wrong. She was skeptical about that, but continued the prescribed exercises and hit the gym twice a week for the strength-building portion of her rehab. Carrie was still thinking about her limp when she realized they'd arrived at home. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Summer squinted her eyes and raised one eyebrow. What are you seeing? No car. I don't think anyone else is home. Carrie turned toward the front step and motioned with her head for Summer to follow as she headed into the house. Mom, Dad, Jack, anybody here? Carrie shouted as they kicked off their shoes in the porch. Seems like we're all alone. Carrie licked her lips and pressed Summer gently against the door into a quick kiss. Carrie shuddered. Every time their lips met, felt the same as it had the first time. That just made my day. Carrie kissed her lightly again. Summer slipped her hands around Carrie's face and gently down her neck as she pulled her deeper into the kiss. Carrie's hands trembled as she brushed them around Summer's waist and hooked her fingers through the belt loops on the back of her jeans, pulling Summer's body closer. The sound of footsteps on the stairs behind them pulled Carrie back to reality as she quickly moved away from Summer and turned to see her brother, frozen and staring at them. Jack had stopped mid-step, still holding the rail, mouth agape, as he came around the corner to find someone kissing his sister in the front porch. I, uh... I'm sorry. I, uh, oh God, I didn't mean to. I mean, Jack's words awkwardly fell from his mouth as he struggled to make a sentence or put his thoughts in order. I just, I mean, I had no idea you were here. The lump in Carrie's throat continued to grow as she gasped for air and stared back at Jack, trying to determine exactly how much he saw. I called out, she croaked. I didn't think you were home. Carrie's vision was getting blurry as tears began to form. Jack finally started to move, making his way down the rest of the staircase. Headphones. I had my headphones on. Wow. I mean, wow. Jack realized that he was still slack-jawed and staring at the two. He shook his head and looked back at them with a grin. Carrie could feel her hands shaking. She wasn't sure how to ask what he'd seen, and she really wasn't sure what his reaction meant. Jack, I don't know what you think you just saw, she started, glancing back at Summer. But it wasn't what you think. Jack just chuckled. I'm pretty sure what I saw was the two of you kissing. I'm not sure how that could be misunderstood as anything other than what it was. Jack thought for a moment. Well, I guess that explains a lot. Carrie could feel the heat of the tears as they steadily streamed down her face. They'd been caught. There was no going back. Oh my god, Jack. Please, please tell me you aren't going to say anything to anyone about this. She rushed over to him as she begged. Jack's eyes softened and he placed his hand on his sister's shoulder. Maybe I should start over. He threw a quick smile at Summer, who was still standing with her back pressed to the door. Mom and Dad will be home soon. Let's go upstairs and talk, all of us. Carrie and Summer shared a nervous glance as they slowly headed up to Carrie's room, stepping in time with Jack in the lead. The lump that was previously in Carrie's throat was now sitting firmly in her stomach, and she knew she could throw up at any moment as she sat on the edge of the bed, and Summer found a place beside her. Jack paced the floor in front of the two, chewing on the top of his thumb and trying to put his thoughts in order. He took a breath and looked up as though he would begin, before shaking his head a little and continuing to pace. 
Jesus, Jack, are you going to tell anyone or not? Summer's face flushed as she started to feel a little panic set in. Just say something, anything already. I won't say anything if you guys don't want me to. Just bear with me. This is a lot to take in, so... He stopped pacing and smiled excitedly at the girls. Are you together together? Was this the first time it happened? He turned to Carrie. Does this mean you're gay? Carrie could hear her breathing shake as hard as her hands were in her lap. She glanced over at Summer. He was asking them questions about things that they hadn't even defined for themselves. This was not the first time, no. As for the rest, I don't know, and I, I think so. Okay. Jack leaned his head between the two girls and gave them both a hug of reassurance. I just want you to be happy. If she's who makes you happy, then I'm all for it. He released the embrace and moved back from the bed. I'll leave you alone to talk. Jack swiftly closed the door as he headed out of the room. The lump in Harry's stomach was starting to subside slightly, and she could see relief flood Summer's face. Someone they knew had found out, and the world didn't come to an end. Carrie slid her hand over Summer's thigh and down her knee. I've been kind of wanting to bring this up to you, but I wasn't really sure what to say. Carrie focused her attention on the placement of her hand. I was afraid that if I talked about it, this might get too real for you, and it might scare you away. Carrie took a deep breath and looked into Summer's eyes. Together, together, she inquired to Summer and held her breath in anticipation of the answer. Carrie, I'm scared. If we put a label on what we are, does that mean you're going to want to tell other people? What does that mean for me? I'm not sure I'm ready to put a label on me. If we say we're together, does that mean I have to say I'm gay? Because I don't know if that's true. I just know that I have feelings for you. Summer's mind raced. Harry straightened her shoulders and shifted to face Summer on the bed. Whether we label it or not, we know that we are in a relationship. There's no denying it. Saying it doesn't have to change anything, but I would really like you to say it. I don't want to keep doing this, all the hiding, all the lies, if we're just fooling around. I love you, and I think you love me too. Carrie, I just... We aren't just fooling around. I'm not just fooling around. I do love you, but I don't want it to be this way. I thought I could handle it. I thought I could deal with the secrets. For you, I thought I could. But I don't want people to know either. I don't want them to look at me like I'm different. I don't want them to stare or spend the rest of my life listening to the whispers. We don't have to tell anyone right away. I'll, I'll get my own place. Carrie got up from the bed and started to place the floor of the bedroom. We wouldn't have to worry about anyone coming in unexpected. We could take our time and see where this goes. Carrie almost pleaded for Summer to agree. I can't. I can't be this way. Summer felt the warmth of tears as they started to pour down her cheeks. I want a home and a family. I want to be normal. I can't do any of that with you. Carrie fell to her knees in front of Summer, wrapping her arms around her legs and burying her face in her lap. Please, please don't say that. I love you. I'm in love with you. I can give you all those things. You just have to let me. Summer stood from the bed and Carrie jumped to her feet to stand between her and the door. Maybe we could just go back to being friends. It would be so much easier if we could just go back to being friends like before. Summer's voice broke as she spoke and she took Carrie's hands as she forced herself to continue. It's not everything that you want it to be, but I want you to be a part of my life. Carrie just shook her head and looked down at her feet. Her panic changed to an empty feeling she had never experienced before. And that's something I can't do. I need this to be more. If I can't be with you, then I can't have you in my life anymore. I can't want you like this and not be with you. The truth is I really thought I could do this. I even told my best friend back home about you, that I thought I had feelings for you, that I do have feelings for you. Summer found herself blurting out everything that had brought them to this moment. She was even okay about it, and that made me think I could be with you and it would be all right. Then what the hell has changed between then and now? Is it because more people know? Jack said he wouldn't tell. We can, can tell people or not tell people whatever we want to do. Just don't do this to me. Come on, son, give us a chance. You know you want to be with me. You can't tell me different. I feel it every time we cut touch, every time we kiss. Carrie thought she could sense a little hope in Summer's confession that meant it might not be over after all. I do want to be with you and know it's not because more people know now. It's because people will keep finding out. I can't handle the names people will call me. Call us. I saw this happen to the girl in my gender studies class a couple of days ago. There were people shouting dyke at her in the parking lot, guys yelling that they could change her mind. I just I can't deal with that. Summer started to cry and push past Carrie, pausing in the doorway. I want to be with you. I really do. And I love you. But I can't deal with any of this. 
Carrie had barely understood the words Summer was saying before she heard the front door slam. Her legs betrayed her as she felt her body slump to the floor and she curled herself into a rocking position, not knowing how to stop the words from repeating over and over again in her head. Carrie wasn't sure how long Summer had been gone or how long Jack had been standing in her doorway when she finally looked up at him. She released her arms from around her knees and slowly stretched her legs down to the floor, feeling the ache in the one she had injured. She wiped her face on the back of her hand. Jack, she managed to croak. It's over, Jack. I don't think I can breathe. Here I am again. <laughs> well, thank you so much for reading that. What a beautiful job you did with it. Thank you. Catch your breath. <laughs> um, you know, there's just so many things covered in that too, in, in, in just that segment. Um, Sarah, just feelings that I think that anyone imagining someone going through that, being young and coming, you know, trying to find themselves in their relationships and then not ready to share that with the world. You captured it beautifully. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like we were saying in the interview, it's a great story. <laughs> it's just, a, you know, it's a great story of relationships. And so uh, anything else you want to add, Sarah? Uh, no, I think that's great. I had their second book is out now. Uh, it's okay. called Love of Julia. And uh, I would love to hear from folks who've read it and see what they think. Yeah. And what I want to throw out here now to folks who are, are have listened to the reading, if you have some questions for Sarah about, you know, her writer's journey and what it's like writing the lesbian romance um, subgenre, what, what it's like working in that subgenre, anything, anything at all that you might want to ask, we'll do our best to answer um, them here um, on the uh, comments below. So feel free to do that. And we'll keep trying to bring you some great writers and readers here on Let's Get Writing. And uh, don't forget to check out the full interview with Sarah. And uh, that's also here on Catherine Taylor Media and Catherine Taylor TV. So I think we've about covered it, Sarah. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> thank you for being my first author read. I well, feel like, you. yeah. Thank you for letting me. Oh, my, my pleasure. And I think we've really kicked off something here today. I think this is the start of, of something great, of getting literature out to the world. And everyone, don't forget, buy the book. Support your, support your favorite authors and show them the love. Okay, well, we'll say goodbye for now. And uh, I'll talk to you again soon, Sarah.